So today I am visiting what is called a sports superstore and I'm also informed there's some really decent golf clubs available here that are pretty difficult to get hold of. So first of all, I hope they've got some in stock. Okay, I am back and I can report we had a really successful trip to the Decathlon Superstore. I think there's a few surprises in store today in this video. At least from what I'm looking at, I am so, so impressed so far. Now the trip didn't quite go according to plan and that's because I went with the intention of buying some irons to test from this Inesis range and ended up with quite a bit more as you can see. The idea of these Superstores is to lure you in with things that you can't quite leave behind like these Adidas. Stan Smith S golf shoes, which were just 40 quid. Couldn't leave them there. I ended up getting an Inesis full uh, Carretta leather glove. The quality of that is superb. That was 15 quid. We've got their Tour 900 urethane coated three piece ball. They were 27 quid a dozen. We will give them a test in a later video. Got a rather clever little towel there, which I like and explain to you about later. We've got the hybrid, we've got the driver. And yes, I managed to pick up a seven and a nine iron of the Inesis 500 irons. We're gonna start off by testing the big dog in the bag because that's where all the interest always lies in these videos. So it's that driver. So in today's video, we're gonna find out just how good this Inesis 500 driver is at 149 pounds. Can it be that good for that kind of money? It's off the shelf, no custom fit involved. And then later on in the video, I'm gonna compare it to my custom fit current gamer, which is the tailor-made stealth. I've gone through all the process of getting the right shaft put into that driver. How much difference is there gonna be? Because surely there's gotta be one, or will there? So the first question I'm asking myself is what compromises am I making if I buy a driver 149 pound? And first of all, aesthetically, I'm thinking that I'm looking at a product which is not gonna have as good of a build quality as those that are 500 pound, it can't have surely. But when I took the head cover off, which is really good quality in itself, I unveiled a Inesis 500 driver that looks really, really decent. I'm talking about from shelf appeal perspective, first of all, so the underneath of the club head, it's very much minimalistic in its markings. I love this muted black finish. I'm always a big fan of that in all the drivers that I've looked at over the years. So it looks really, really good from a shelf appeal perspective. And then when you turn the club over at a dress, it's just a classic gloss black crown. It really, really does look a very decent product indeed. And then the shaft quality, again, what compromises am I making there? Well, the shaft choices might be minimal, but the quality of the shaft that's fitted in this is from UST. It's an Elements chrome shaft. We'll soon find out how good that is or not, but the main restriction is kind of no adjustability in this particular model. And obviously there are limitations in terms of the shaft's options themselves but in terms of the quality of the product, it looks really, really good, you know. Now the next thing that concerns me is how good is this thing gonna sound? It's not a big deal for many people, but I really like the way, or it's a big sway for me, a big persuader in terms of how um, I hate, for example, the big loud noise that some drivers make. So I'm really fearful as to how this thing is gonna sound on impact. But I've gotta say, once again, it ticks a box. It's a real solid sound off that face. It feels like the ball is shooting out there, but it's soft enough. I like a little bit of responsiveness into the hands, even with driver. And yet again, it ticks another box. I'm so, so shocked at this point. Now, as you can see, at the moment, we're finding very much the centre of the club face. And whilst a lot of people are quoting me COR numbers right now in terms of uh, golf club's restrictions, in terms of their performance, yes, from the centre, I'd agree. What I'm really interested in when I do club testing, particularly with driver, is what's happening when I'm not finding that centre of the club face. So in other words, 
what kind of fall offs and drop offs have we got in terms of that carry distance how forgiving is a driver and that's another thing that perhaps i would question is going to be an issue with this driver but at the end of this we'll find out in the data if that is actually the case or not so golf has always been criticized for being a well an elitist sport and it's very expensive to play and maybe expensive more than ever right now in terms of new equipment with majority of drivers being released at sort of 500 pound then rightly so being criticized so the big question is how are decathlon and inasys producing drivers that uh, at this stage i will certainly say is of a real good quality for 149 pounds that begs a question to the big manufacturers out there just how much money they are making from the products they are selling because i have to say the biggest shock that i've had i've never been in decathlon before in my life if i'm honest with you i didn't know it was a sports only superstore and I was impressed with the quality of pretty much what they sold there. There's some garbage in there in my opinion as well, but what they sell in terms of the golf products was really, really visually very good. And obviously, depending on what the data tells us and my overall feedback, performance is ultimately the key. But the first bit they've got right is everything looks really good. The quality of the build is really good. The components are really good. It's hard to find fault right now. Now, obviously we've got to mention the limitations and one of those being, like I said, the choice of the loft, the amount of adjustability in this 500 range. I do believe there's perhaps another product in, the, uh, in, a, in a higher range than 900, but we've got no adjustability, limitation on shaft, 12 degree driver head. I don't think there are any other options. Again, the website is not fantastic, so I'm sorry that the information I'm relaying is not great, but I'm doing my best to find out what I can. This is a regular shaft, so again, wouldn't be perfect for me. And again, no adjustability means it's limited. So when we do the head-to-head -head at the end of the video, then of course I'm expecting the tailor-made fitted product to perform better. All I'm using it for is a bit of a barometer to see, well, just how far off is this? And at this kind of money, you, you know, it's kind of like, even if you buy this as your, your, your first driver, if you like, your starting point, to to uh to get into the game and i'm suggesting right now it might be a bit better than that actually but it's a good starting point and it allows you to to uh, find out whether you like the game without blowing a huge amount of cash and right now i'm thinking it's a really really good option you know i'm hitting the ball straight as well which is uh i don't see my 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 impression is Sometimes I'm dropping off a little bit in terms of yardage and I seem to be finding all around the centre of the face. That worries me a little bit. The data will tell me the full story, but I'm also hitting some decent long balls out there. But dispersion seems good right now. Right, so data is collected with the Inesis 500. Um, I'm now going to switch into the Stealth product. I've already put all the disclaimers as to why this is not a head-to-head. -head. Don't anyone get upset about the fact that there's different shafts. I've already said that. We're just going to use it as a barometer, so just chill a little bit. Do you know what I mean? In them comments section, use a bit of the old common grey matter. This is just to look at. We're expecting it to be better, or at least I hope it is anyway. Um, but... I'm going to switch over to that, I'm going to hit some balls, and what I want to do is see how much the difference is, and we'll try and identify how much the difference is between the head, or the shaft, or a combination of the two. Right, okay, let's keep this one short and sweet, eh? I think um, I've done all I can do in terms of data, I'd be gladly take this out on the course if we feel it needs to be, and maybe a combination of the kind of the irons, the driver, the hybrids, the ball, I'll take them all out at some stage and give them all a bit of a round of golf. And uh, my initial assessment of that before I try anything else is from the driver's perspective, this is more than good enough for many, many golfers out there. And depending on what level you're at, and I'll discuss that very, very shortly. Yeah, this is really interesting to me. I'm gonna give you the data, I'll give you the averages of what I achieved with the Inesis 500 driver. 230 carry, 12 degree launch, 143 average ball speed, 26 spin, 80 peak height. A suggested finishing average of 253 drive. Now I've always said on this channel that my sort of average has always been 235 to 240 with some of the drivers that I hit. And if I achieved that, then I'm really, really pleased. So arguably you'd say, well, that's just fell a little bit below that. And yes, it has. But when you see the data that I'm gonna throw up for you now, which is the full set of numbers that I collected over whatever it is, just 10, 12 shots, You'll also see in there there's a ball at 247 with a ball speed of 147 
we've got a 243 carry, we've got a 241 carry. So the distance is in there. My ability to perform with it consistently over a number of shots wasn't quite there. And that could arguably be down to the shaft because of the delivery of the club just didn't feel quite right for me on a number of occasions. Like I said, I could see those drop-offs out there down range, um, but there's clearly the yardage in there when you get that right and out of the middle, as we've said in terms of COR, when it's right out the middle, then yes, we're gonna get those same carry distances we can achieve with all other drivers. The bits that I'm really impressed with, it launched the ball really well, that average of 12.6, I think is a decent number, the spin number, really, really impressive as well, an average of two six, uh, two, uh, 2,600 revs, and that 80 peak height, really, really good. Now, I am going to put these numbers up because I hit three shots with the stealth immediately after, and I absolutely hit three knuckleballs. It's as simple as that. I mean, 254 average carry, 14.2 launch, 151 ball speed, 22 spin, peak height of 98. I mean, they are just optimal numbers for me. I have never, I keep saying this in terms of, and the, the, the debate goes on in terms of what drivers, they're all the same or are they not all the same. I've never performed as good with this driver shaft combination. So again, before everybody gets excited, this shaft is obviously clearly a major component in how well this Stealth has performed for me. So, when you do the assessment of how good the Inesis 500 is, it's really, really good. It performs exceptionally well with limitations. And that limitation being the major one, being the shaft that's been, or the option of shafts that you can get into that driver. And that's often the case that I've found with a lot of the drivers at the low end in terms of budget, you just restrict it a bit. But then you've got to consider, well, who is that driver for? If you've been playing a game for 35 years, like I have, and uh, spend a lot of time doing it, and uh, happy to spend maybe a little bit more money on it, and go for the sort of custom fit that I went through with the tailor-made stealth, then maybe that's justifiable. And maybe if you're at that sort of uh, single low figure end of the game, maybe again, that's okay. But when you look at the Inesis 500, if you're a higher handicap golfer who's looking for some high launching driver um, in their hand, this is a really, really good option. And I really do mean that. I'm, I am shocked. I mean, I've tested some cheaper drivers in the past. And whilst I've tried to remain as positive as I can, to you as an audience and not get a little bit sort of turn my nose up at these things. It's been difficult because they do have frailties, there are issues with them. And I can honestly say that's not been the case with this driver. I think it looks really, really good, like I said, first and foremost, which is a major tick for me. And as I say, then it's all about performance. And it's certainly, I'd, I'd happily play with that golf club. I could play golf with that club quite easily. I can get round, I could drive the ball well. It's, I'll put the dispersion up now because again that's something that we sometimes forget to put up. The dispersion with the product was good. So like I said, really, really good with limitations but at 149 quid surely there's got to be some limitations and unfortunately there is. Right, anyway. Make of it what you will. Make of it in the comments what you will with some logical feedback, yeah? I'm, I'm getting sometimes there's some, uh, a little bit stuff's getting a little bit tedious. Don't quote COR numbers to me. Have a look at the data, what you've seen, and put some logic behind those comments, and I'll gladly respond. Because of late, I always feel like I want to respond to comments, but of late, it's getting a little bit more difficult because some of the stuff in there is getting, like I said, just a little bit tedious. So take from it what you will, use a bit of common sense, and derive your own sort of um, analysis, if you like, from it. But that's my thought process on it for now. Right, as ever, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all very soon. I hope you enjoyed that one. Maybe you were as shocked as I was.